Steam Gear Mash! It's yet another good reason why you should own an import card for your Sega Saturn, as it is an excellent import exclusive. You play as Mash, a steam-powered robot, or Steam Gear, hence the title, who's been built to be this girl's special friend. Except space pedophiles have kidnapped her. Now Mash has to go and rescue her. And it all goes swimmingly, except he gets Luke Skywalkered in the opening cutscene. Now rebuilt and with a giant chargeable cannon for a hand, Mash sets out again. Gameplay wise, it is a 3D isometric platformer. And it being on the Sega Saturn means it's always going to get compared to Sonic 3D Blast, which was also pretty good on the Saturn. The Genesis version can eat it, though. But it being an isometric platformer means it has inherent problems. Perspective-wise, it's always difficult to judge distances, just because it always has that sort of weird three-quarter angle view, which always means if you need to jump closer to the camera, it feels like you need to jump less distance than you need to, and jumping further away either means it's going to look like you need to jump further than you need to, or alternatively, it's kind of hard to judge the depth because of walls that connect to the platform. And this game is no exception, it definitely has those problems like most isometric platformers. But that's not where all the problems in this game lie. It follows a very formulaic style, essentially you are dropped into an area, you have to navigate around the environment until you find hidden weapon power-ups, and then you have to take said weapon and go to the boss area using said weapon to open a special door. Essentially, each weapon is used as a glorified lock and key system, and this is inherently problematic because that means that gameplay-wise, you are discouraged from actually using your weapons, because your sub-weapons require ammo. And if you go all flamethrower happy on every enemy you see, you won't be able to unlock the door to fight the boss and move on. And it's a shame that it did this, because it does have some fun weapons to use, especially when you get into a tight spot and you really feel like you should use it. But you've always got that nagging feeling in the back of your head, oh no, if I use this, suddenly I'm screwed out of getting to the boss, without having to farm enemies for energy. And that's no fun. Speaking of farming enemies for energy, trying to get health drops from opponents is like pulling teeth. Like, seriously, for whatever reason, you will find weapon energy three times as much as you will find health. Which goes into another problem, being that it's hard to judge exactly how much health you have, because your health meter in the top left corner doesn't really have increments, and it doesn't really tell you exactly how much health you have and how much damage each enemy's doing, until you're dead. This compounds further with enemy placement, because some levels have really tight corridors with enemies that like to just rampage straight through. Now you could just hang back and charge your weapons, or use your sub-weapons if you feel like you've got enough extra energy, but the problem with this is, even if you manage to take out your opponent, there's going to be another one a few feet away. And unlike a lot of games, you can't simply take a hit and run through, because while there is post-damage and vulnerability, it's not very long it's very easy to start chaining damage from enemies. Which does mean that the difficulty in this game is a bit unforgiving at times, which is a real shame. Because, while it sounds like I've done nothing but complain about this game up to this point, it's actually a ton of fun. In addition to picking up different sub-weapons, you can also pick up different weapon firing modes. As you can see at the bottom of the screen, you can cycle through them, and right now I'm gonna just have to apologize for the sloppy gameplay because your weapon modes actually are activated with the right trigger, and my Saturn controller's right trigger is apparently dying. So I'm getting hurt a lot more than I intend to, and I'm probably not showing off the different firing modes all that well. In addition to firing modes and weapons, there's also cats to collect. Just cats to collect. Yeah. And that's basically gameplay. It's a tad unforgiving due to its isometric nature, its over-concentration of enemies in small areas, and its reliance on sort of conserving your sub-weapon ammo. But really, despite it being a little bit more difficult than I think it should be, it's still a ton of fun. Just make sure you have a save card ready because the files on this game take up a bit of space and you're probably going to be saving a lot to prevent losing data. 
Presentation wise, this game is gorgeous. Visually, it just looks pretty. All the enemies are bright and creative and fun. Mash himself is a bright and colorful character. The various bosses are creative and interesting. And I'm not gonna lie, I like the explosion-y effects. They're, they're very pretty. Audio wise, the game is pretty good. In terms of soundtrack, it definitely tries to put its best foot forward from the start by having the most catchy tunes up front and as you progressively move through the soundtrack, it gets less and less memorable. That said, the soundtrack is good and catchy, although not terribly memorable after, like, the first level. The sound effects also work relatively well. While some of them do sound stock, others sound really nice. The cats sound like, well, cats. And MASH is quite talkative with his steam whistle every time he gets hurt. I think both visually and audibly this game is excellent and has tons of personality and I think that's what helps make Steam Gear Mash so memorable. Now, do I recommend Steam Gear Mash? Well, if you can import Sega Saturn games, absolutely. It requires absolutely no understanding of the language to play well, and it's just a fun, fun time. It is a tad pricier than your average Saturn import, sitting at the $10 to $20 range, but that's still a steal for a game this good. The only thing that I would ever say to dissuade you from getting this game is if you're the kind of person who's offended by a short game length. Because really, this game has like half a dozen levels, so if you're bothered by short games, well, you might want to avoid this one because you could beat it in an hour, an hour and a half pretty easily. But if you do skip out on this game, you are missing out.